Buying the land you need for a glamping site, a series of cabins, or even a single family home can be an expensive and stressful process if you don't follow the right steps. In today's video, I'm gonna break down the common mistakes that people make when buying land, the steps to avoid those mistakes, and how I use these exact steps to avoid buying a beautiful property that wasn't going to support the type of glamping site that I envisioned. Before I get into the specifics around buying land, you don't actually need to spend any money at all before you can know whether a piece of land is gonna support the project that you want to build. But it will cost you some time. But that time is incredibly well spent because it's gonna save you from making a very expensive mistake and buying the wrong property. Avoiding expensive mistakes is something I do a lot on this channel. So if that is something that you wanna to continue to learn about, then hit like and subscribe. First, let me start with the story. We started our very first glamping site on some land that family owned. And we didn't go into depths talking to the county about what we wanted to do because the state and county are pretty lax when it comes to zoning. So we started by clearing some land and creating some mulch and we put in about $20,000 doing that. Well, our next step was to get what's called a perk test. And this is where you test the soil to know what kind of septic system you can put that will collect all of the waste. But what we didn't know was that the county only allows for perk tests to happen during the wet season, which was six months away. So we were at a complete standstill. Now, what would have saved us some time was a conversation with the county to ask them about the tests that we needed to get on the land. But we avoided that step because we thought we didn't need it. In other words, we made the same mistake that a lot of newbies do. And that's because we were so excited to start the project that we just wanted to get going. So let's get into the three crucial steps that you have to take before you buy a piece of property. So for our current glamping site, the vision is a mix of hard-sided and soft structures. So think tree houses and geodesic domes. But because this is a much bigger project, we were not gonna make the same mistake and not talk to the county first. So we met with the health department as well as the planning and zoning department. And that's because these are two of the offices that really have all of the say when it comes to what kinds of projects that will be allowed on county land. And as a result of those meetings, I learned that our vision of the hard-sided and soft-sided structures was not gonna be a reality in this county. That's because for hard-sided structures, we would also have to do some type of outdoor or nature programming. And for soft-sided structures, that would have to be a campsite which could not operate all year and the tents could not have their own kitchen and bathroom, which is really what we envisioned. If I hadn't have taken the step of meeting with the county first, I would have gone ahead and gotten a site plan which would have cost $10,000 at least because it would have envisioned the soft-sided and hard-sided structures. And then I would have submitted my zoning application and I would have gotten rejected because that's not allowed. So while I was heartbroken, I am really glad that I had that conversation with the county first. So here are the three steps. One, get to know your local regulations. Go to your county zoning and planning website as well as the health department's website and try to see what the requirements are for developing land and see what the application requirements are because that is gonna list the steps that you have to follow. Two, meet with your county after you read all of those rules and regulations to make sure that you are clear on what you can and cannot do. Share with them the type of project that you wanna do and ask them if that type of project will be allowed. Three, now this step is really important, so pay attention. Find a realtor who specializes in commercial or land development because that person is going to know the types of questions to ask the county and they may even have relationships with them so you can make that appointment a lot sooner. Ultimately, what I learned in this meeting with the county was a blessing in disguise. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. It felt like my dreams were crushed when I met the county, I'm not gonna lie, but ultimately I walked away with the most important lesson, which is to let the rules and the land guide what you're gonna do. Don't come in with grandiose visions of the exact type of project that you want to build because you have no idea whether that's going to be allowed or not. So before you get emotionally attached to a specific piece of property, make sure that you look at the rules, but speak with the county first 
That way you'll know what you can and cannot do and whether that property is even a good idea for that specific project. Now, everything I just shared with you is completely useless if you don't know how you're gonna fund this project. So check out this video here to learn about financing a glamping site, the right type of bank, and the right type of loan to fund this really complex project. To become an Airbnb host, check out my links down below for a referral code and you will earn $40 after you host your first guest. And down below, you will find all of my links to decorate and furnish your Airbnb like a pro. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.